Hey, cats and kits, Captain Zorik here, and yes, it is remarkably early for uh, a tour of vacant New York, but uh, there's something I wanted to tell you guys. So, let me find a place to rest for a moment where I can talk to you about a thing or two. Um, I suppose one spot's as good or bad as another. Check out that uh, empty avenue going that way and then going the other way. Okay, hey, Ian, thank you for joining us. All right, so I'll just lean up against this lamppost here. Now, all right, I would do this because I want to be more sincere, but there are people walking around who may come close to me, and I don't want to, like, disrupt by pulling on, pulling off, so we're just going to stay safe and do this. So, um, some shit went down, all right? And uh, unless you are like me and didn't watch television or or look at the internet that much uh, yesterday, you might have missed it. When I was off to work last night at about uh, 10.30, um, the neighborhood was what the neighborhood was. I'm currently uh, staying at a place in uh, Bed-Stuy near the Nostrand Avenue stop. Oh, that's its nickname, the Jenga building? <laughs> oh, cool. All right. Thanks, Max. Anyway, um, and there were the guys who were always hanging out out in front of that particular uh, store. They were hanging out there. Uh, the people were coming by. There's always the guy who asked her a dollar or fifty cents. But uh, I was a half a block away from uh, my subway station, and up the avenue on it's a rather significant intersection there. I heard chants, and I saw a crowd chanting something that sounded a lot like "No justice, no peace." And now I had noticed uh, what had been going on in. Uh, in Minnesota, I saw the uh, I saw the riots there. The they had not burned down the police station yet, but they ha but the Umbrella Man uh, video was out, and I was sure to share that because that's just too freaking weird. So uh, uh, what that guy was doing there. So I kind of wanted to share it because it seemed like a kind of significant thing. The Umbrella Man, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so you got all these protesters out there in Minneapolis about uh, the, uh, the incident where the police were arresting that guy, uh, allegedly for passing a, uh, a counterfeit $20 bill or something, and wound up putting him on the ground next to their car, and one particular police officer put his knee on the guy's neck, and eight minutes later uh, took his knee off his neck, and that guy's now dead. By the way, that guy was black. The officer was white. So, uh, in this world and day and age that, uh, oh yeah, hey Austin, how are you doing? Uh, just a heads up, I'm, I'm going to say some things that some people might think are political content. So, just giving you the heads up right now. Um, in this day and age in which we're but weeks away from a time when an unarmed black man was killed by a shotgun by two white guys trying to make a citizen's arrest. I'm not going to go into the details, but that that much I know happened. Um, where there are several other incidents of black people being killed by white cops, uh, and they may or may not have been guilty of what they were being accused of, but it's almost certain that they were not uh, a threat to the cop who then killed them. Uh, and, you know, 41 shots is still in our living memory. Um, so, uh, Eric Garner is still in our living memory. Uh, Trayvon Martin is still in our living memory. Yes, Trayvon Martin was not shot by a cop. He was shot by a civic, by a civic minded individual who took it upon himself to get out of his car, um, uh, and confront the young man. Anywho, so there were protests because the, the cop whose knee was on the black guy's neck had been fired but not yet arrested and not yet charged. And then here comes Umbrella Man and with a hammer and smashes in the windows of the auto zone. And from what I could tell, there had been no other smashing of windows up to that point. Then you can hear in the background of that very same video, within a minute, the tear gas starts going off, all right? Weird. 
suspicious, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, um, conspiracy? Was that a guy a cop? There's, uh, there are people saying that his wife uh, uh, turned him in or, or said what he, or admitted that it was her husband who was a cop who did that. Um, and broken windows and, you know, within a minute, there was somebody jumping into that broken window and jumping out. Uh, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, anybody who's lived through the 20th century uh, can sort of tell you what happened, can sort of tell you what was likely to happen next. And it went about as bad as you could imagine, apparently. The, uh, uh, the, police, the uh, police precinct in Minneapolis, I think it was the police precinct that that particular cop had come from, uh, was invaded, occupied, the police vacated, and that uh, police precinct building was burned. I don't know how extensive the damage is, people have said burned to the ground, but I don't know if that's just a poetic exaggeration or if it really is a pile of rubble right now. So, um, so I'm walking uh, to work. And I did not know that anything was happening in New York about this, but I heard this crowd chanting what sounded like no justice, no peace. And I was all ready to whip out my phone and take this onto Facebook Live at the moment. But they moved on. The crowd was only like 100 some odd people, barely even a block long. And I was like, gee, well, that's disappointing. Um, I said, uh, uh, but I remember back uh, when, um, you remember the Rodney King beating? And when the Rodney King uh, verdict did not go as a lot of people hoped it did, and there were riots in Los Angeles, um, there were no riots in New York. There were protests and demonstrations, but somehow, I forget who was mayor, was it Dinkins? New York managed to keep it civil. While there was, you know, uh, who was that other guy that got uh, Rodney King and uh, the other guy stay, when in Los Angeles, stay in your car. So, I really kind of didn't expect what I later found out. A friend of mine posted up on his Facebook page, Brooklyn is in flames. And I'm like, wait a minute, I was just in Brooklyn. I didn't see any flames. Well, just like New York City is big enough that there could be children playing, playing in the street on 9-11 as the smoke was rising from the pit at ground zero, I was apparently one neighborhood over from where one or two neighborhoods over from where protesters were getting busy outside the 88th precinct. And I saw the video of the police van burning. I saw, I saw graffiti all over police cars, police vans, all over uh, various uh, parts of uh, at the Barclays Center, signage at the Barclays Center. It kind of reminded me of the... Uh, of the prison riot in, uh, in uh, what do you call it, uh, um, that Quentin Tarantino movie with Rodney Dangerfield and, uh, and, uh, and Woody Harrelson, uh, what's it called, uh, Natural Born Killers, um, the way there was what looked like chaos and anarchy. Well, first off, to all you folks out there who are not in New York City, there were plenty of parts of New York City that were not chaos and anarchy because New York City is that big. There were plenty uh, in my neighborhood between my uh, where I'm staying and the subway. Most everybody I see is black and they were sitting there chilling. I didn't stop to listen to what they were talking about, but uh, they weren't marching and throwing Molotov cocktails or anything. Um, it wasn't until I got to the avenue and the crowd on that avenue was only about 100 people uh, de uh, only about a hundred people or so and didn't even last a whole a whole block so I didn't think nothing of it but now I did post up a thing all right I got a thing to say about what's going on here um, first off now let me just get this out before before you respond there's no excuse for rioting, looting, arson, and destruction of property. Okay? And I'm saying that both to placate, both, I don't know, placate's the right word, 
uh, give a bone to or show that I'm not completely in disagreement with uh, law and order types or pacifists. I happen to self-identify as a pacifist myself, although some blah blah, we'll just leave it at that. However, it is also, maybe even more so, inexcusable to leave your knee on a guy's neck that you're trying to arrest long enough that he dies. Okay? And what the fuck's that umbrella man doing? Okay? Now, there are lots of people... Now, I'm not black. That's obvious enough. Okay? I have zero black in me. Um, I actually kind of grew up culture neutral with a, sort of a generic New York City American culture. Um, the... Uh, because my mom was a single parent going to college and uh, I didn't really hang out with the neighborhood kids much. And I went to an elementary school, that uh, Manhattan Country School, that uh, aggressively recruited for diversity. And uh, so, I re so I grew up singing, uh, you, you know, uh, civil rights songs. Oh, freedom over me, uh, we shall overcome. You know, freedom, 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 freedom. Those were the songs that we were taught in school. All right. They, there was a poster of Martin Luther King Jr. with his I Have a Dream speech in the lobby of the school. All right. And I have actually been in a couple of situations in which I was the only white guy in a sea of black people. And I'll get back to one of those incidents. But also, in the past couple of years, I've been acting in plays with the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. I played, I have played a slave ship captain, a slave master, and a slave hunter. But I've also played General Sherman, and twice I played Abraham Lincoln uh, signing the uh, Emancipation Proclamation. All right, so, uh, actually in three shows I played uh, I played Abraham Lincoln, twice signing the Emancipation Proclamation and once just uh, thinking about it. And I realized something, okay? Race, 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 race. There is no race, it's all the human race. Um, any developmental psychologist will tell you that it's 100% nature and it's 100% nurture. You cannot separate the individual from the environment. You can't say, that this part of him is his genetics and that part of him is his upbringing because, or her, or, or anything in between. Because the environment will not be the same without that person in it. And that person cannot exist unless they are within an environment. So there is no nature versus nurture. It's all one thing. All right? Now, um, without getting into too much detail, let's just say that the social history of the United States has led to a condition in which um, people of matching ethnicities tend to be grouped together. They live in houses, they live in the same neighborhoods, they go to the same schools, they shop in the same stores, they listen to the same music. All right, this is called demographics. And if you're selling something or running for office, you have to live with this fact and you work that fact to your greatest advantage. All right, so if, so now, if people who run for office and people who sell things can acknowledge that there are differences between people of this particular ethnicity, national origin, genetics, whatever, you, the people in this particular neighborhood are more likely to buy this flavor of soda pop and the people across the street who happen to all be of a different ethnicity will buy another flavor of a different flavor of soda pop then you got to think that there's a common uh that there's a common um that there's a common culture if you will among people who live together because they all talk to each other you know and uh this ain't to say that other people who didn't happen to grow up in this neighborhood or who didn't happen to share that particular, didn't have to come from that particular uh, uh, ethnic strain can't appreciate that culture, can't enjoy that culture, can't assimilate into that culture. What? It could happen. Now, 
That doesn't mean that a white person can say, I'm black, no. But a person who happens to be European American, for lack of a better stupid word, uh, might appreciate the fashions and the music uh, and, 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 and everything else that makes up the culture that happens to be predominantly black people. All right, it could happen. However, the fact is that culture is predominantly black people. And there are other cultures that are predominantly white. And then there's Latino, and then there's everything else. Now, yes, burning, looting, uh, rioting is bad and something that shouldn't be done. But there's, I am treading on a tightrope or a razor's edge here because I am not black. And I have not actually grown up in that culture and so while I can understand it from what I see and from what people tell me I can't get it in my soul I mean I can't grok it you know what I mean so when I say it I'm reporting it as opposed to actually feeling it in the same way and in those plays that I did at the Baptist Church there were reenactments of lynchings and people went bye-bye as a result. They, were, they, they lost themselves in the moment. I saw five ministers administering to the actress who played a character who got lynched. To, because I don't know the proper term for it, I can only say, get the demons out. One of them, two of them were waving their arms, uh, acting like they were actually pulling things out. One of them was reading from the good book. One of them was uh, sprinkling holy water. Um, they were really, they had to bring her out of where she went when she was in that scene. Uh, now, I don't believe what they believe, but whatever they did worked, okay? And what that play was trying to do worked. I don't know if I can ever go there, all right? So I can't say with the same degree of conviction what needs to be said but what needs to be said is that those riots that burning that looting that pillaging did not happen in a vacuum it happened because things happened that led those people to feel that there was nothing better for them to do in that moment okay so if we want to stop riding and burning and looting and pillaging. Yeah, sure. From a position of strength, when the looting begins, shooting begins wrong, Mr. President. You do not kill your own citizens, okay? What you do is you try to figure out why the fuck they think that learning, looting and burning and pillaging and all that is the thing to do at the moment. Why are they throwing rocks at the cops, you know? What is Black Lives Matter all about? Matters all about. You know, uh, there's a quarterback out there. He took a knee. And he took a knee with the consultation of a U.S. military person, a Green Beret, who talked it out with them. That taking a knee was sort of like a sign of respect, but still a statement. You know, and don't try to say it's disrespecting our veterans and the flag. And what was that news person that said, why doesn't he just say what it's about? He said, it's about police violence against people of color. He said that. Why is there police violence against people of color? Okay, we can look at the numbers. And there's someone out there saying, hey, same number of black people killed as white people killed. It's equal, it's equal, it's equal. No, there's such a thing as a disproportionate, disproportionate when the same number, there's only 13% of the country is black people everybody else is white or something else, mostly white. All right, so when the same number of black people are killed as white people, that means a greater percentage of black people are killed as white people. Now, you could look at the stats and say that more black people are convicted of this kind of crime or that kind of crime. Why is that? All right, well, why, let's look at some other things. Um, why do they have lower incomes? Why is there a lower average education level? Why is there a lower income level? 
uh, among the average black person and the average person doesn't exist it's just there's more people in that range than than in the other ranges okay um so it's not about arresting and trying the 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 instigators of the riots and the people who 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 uh who lit the matches and stole the tv sets okay and like that guy said yeah stealing a tv set isn't going to bring justice but what made that person feel that the best thing he could do at the moment was steal a TV set. Is it because he doesn't have the money for such a nice TV set? Is it because advertising has been saying, hey, your girl, your girl won't think you're a man. Your person of preferred gender won't think you are a person of your true gender unless you have a bigger, nicer TV set. And maybe, just maybe, there's, there's cycles going on. Cycles of violence. Um... You know, you got me upset, so I did something that upsets you. So you do something that upsets me, so I do something. Something's got to stop. Something's going to give. And maybe the people who have more to give ought to be the people given something. You know, those people who got all those tax breaks. You know, I don't have the experience of putting in a resume with a name that doesn't sound like my true... Uh, 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 a name that doesn't sound like my true ethnicity and seeing that I got that I got more callbacks for that resume. I have a pretty unusual name, yeah. Uh, but uh, truth to tell, I can't remember a time that a, a blindly submitted resume ever got me anything. Um, you know, I don't have the experience of, uh, of um, being given a second look when I walk into a store, except back when I was... Uh, of single-digit age, and I used to shove a baseball card pack into my back pocket every now and again. Sorry about that, actually. Um, you know, I don't have the experience of being stopped on the street and told that I answered the description of someone who did something. Well, I do, kind of. When I was uh, 11 years old visiting my family in Florida, I walked through a neighborhood that I didn't realize was a high-crime neighborhood, but you know what the cops did? They put me in the car, Asked me where I was staying, I, you know, I told, asked me where I lived, I told them New York, I told them where I was staying with my grandma, and they drove me back and let me go, and showed me a picture of, uh, of a high crime person, uh, of, a, of a wanted criminal in the neighborhood who did look a lot like me and was about uh, maybe about my age, or, or looked my age, I was, I was tall for my age, so I looked like 13 when I was 11. Um, but I read the blog post to the school teacher who was told, wait here, and surrounded by police, and prevented from leaving, even though he had his school's identification card around his neck, because knit cap, bulky jacket, that answers the description of the guy who did whatever over there. The idea that a person could think, could threaten a black person by saying, I'm gonna tell the police that there's an African American here. I don't have the experience of that. But there's a bunch of people out there that do. And it frustrates them to no end. I get it. I can't live it. I can't feel it, but I get it. So, we're talking deep dive here. We're talking changing society. And and all you guys who say, and, and maybe, the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act that were gutted over the past few years by, by Republican shenanigans need to be revisited. Maybe affirmative action needs to be more affirmative. Okay, well, Mark, black people were not the only people looting. I'm not talking about the people who weren't black who were looting, okay? Thank you for also posting the JFK. When peaceful process becomes impossible, then violent revolution becomes inevitable. Yes. So, stop killing black people who, uh, while you're trying to arrest them, okay? So yeah, let me try to sum this up because I got to get off to do the weekly shopping that I do for my 83-year-old uh, mom. Incidentally, she grew up during uh, Jim, the Jim Crow era in the South, and 
as a small child, she didn't witness the worst of Jim Crow. Uh, she just like wondered what kind of music, what kind of movies black people saw because they went to different movie theaters. <laughs> All right. Um, heck, she did a minstrel show with the Glee Club when she was in high school. She was in blackface. I'll tell you the joke she said. Uh, she was an interlocutor and said, it's been so long since I kissed a girl, I wouldn't know whether to suck in or blow out. And she got kicked out of the Glee Club for that. The, uh, the grown-ups weren't impressed. All right. But she left home in 1953. She traveled the world. She became a little bit more enlightened, went back home and said, oh, my God. And being enlightened, uh, as she puts it, her word, she was shocked and dismayed at the uh, archaic, racist attitudes of the people in her hometown. And I will tell you, I have gone down there and I have heard things from my own relatives that are shocking. They are my relatives. I love them. We're all of the same clan. But we come from different worlds and I just can't put up with a thing or two that I've heard them say a time or two. <sighs> so yeah, so to sum up, what is the important thing? Okay, we've already acknowledged burning and looting is bad. I've even used the word no excuse, all right? But there's a reason. And doing bad things does not invalidate the reasons that those things were done when those reasons are legitimate complaints. And I think it's a legitimate complaint if you feel like you're living in a situation where other people who are not in your situation have a better shot at getting ahead in life than you do. All right? Also, if a disproportionate number of people with faces like yours, to use the recently developed uh, terminal, uh, phrase, are getting killed by cops. So it's not just about arresting the, the people who did it. It's not just about arresting the cop. It's about looking into why this happens. Maybe police officers need more training. Maybe police officers need more specific training. I'm just gonna go a little deep for a minute. I know myself that I'm not ready to be a police officer because I have made mistakes in handling situations that um, someone who knew better what to do would have handled better. So I gotta hope that police officers get trained to know the balance between the law, serve, uh, uh, enforcing the law and keeping the peace so that they can avoid having to put their knee on someone's neck or shooting somebody who's running away. So that's all I got to say about that. There, there, now there are some people out there. Nope. That's it. I said what I had to say. I think I've said it as best as I could without, you know, really writing over it and rereading it and editing it down. And thank you all for tuning in. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time I'm on uh, Facebook Live or that we actually get to see each other in person. I love you all. People are far enough away so you can actually see my face. I love you all. Thank you for your time. Hey, cats and kits. Captain Zorik here. I'm just going to keep this brief. I, said every, I uh, showed everything else I wanted to show about Chambers Street yesterday. Uh, and I said a whole, everything I wanted to say about the, uh, uh, the riots. I'm just going to repeat one more thing one last time. When I say there's no excuse for, for burning and looting and so forth, that's because I'm concerned with the destruction of privacy. Uh, sorry, the destruction of property. Some of those uh, stores, they were people's lives, and not all insurances cover riots. However, just because... I say there's no excuse doesn't mean there wasn't a legitimate beef, doesn't mean that there was a, wasn't a reason it happened, doesn't mean that there wasn't a legitimate beef that ought to be addressed. So what do you say we address that beef, solve the problem, so therefore we don't have to deal with this kind of shit in the future, okay? Uh, 
maybe uh, invest a little bit in education, uh, uh, especially in inner cities and low-income neighborhoods. Uh, lower college tuitions or provide grants instead of loans. Uh, things like that. Uh, um, after school activities, put arts back in school because arts in the uh, promote arts in schools because arts, performing, musical, uh, visual have been shown to uh, to actually boost students' grades and keep them in school. Things like that that'll help people in lower income neighborhoods and urban neighborhoods uh, get a better advantage to get somewhere where they can get the fucking better job so that they won't have to take advantage of chaos to steal a TV, okay? All right, enough of that. I got work to do myself. Uh, so uh, anyway, you, you all enjoy your day. Um, I'm going to go see uh, what's left of Brooklyn now. Uh, hopefully they didn't make it into bed All right, Captain Zorik coming at you. I love you all.